Today we're going to be learning about factoring type 1 trinomials. Factoring type 1 trinomials is considered to be easier than factoring type 2 trinomials. I have a video for factoring type 2, type two trinomials as well. But it is also important to know how to do these ones too. And in order to understand how to factor type 1 trinomials, we're going to first look at the FOIL pattern. Again, just to make sure everybody understands how that works. So in FOIL, which is basically double distributivity, the first letter or the first term in this bracket will multiply both terms in this bracket, and the second term in this first bracket will multiply both terms in that bracket, or the two first things multiply, the two outer things multiply, the two inner things multiply, and the two last things multiply. And if you look, and what happens, you end up with four terms in your answer, and the two middle terms combine together to give your middle term in your trinomial. Now, what I want to point out here is that the two middle terms, 4x and 3x, add together to give 7x, and those were the same two terms in the initial brackets here. And when you multiply those two terms, 4 times 3, it gives you the last term. So in order to deconstruct FOIL, you have to remember that pattern. The two numbers multiply to give the last number at the end, but add to give the middle number in the middle. And that's what we're going to use as a pattern to factor our trinomial. So if we look at the idea that reversing FOIL is what factoring is, we want to reverse what we just did by using that pattern. So what I like to do is I like to set up a little tree that I call it, where I take this last number and I put it at the top of the tree, and I'm breaking that number up because I need two numbers that multiply to that number, but add to the middle number, which is 3 in this case. So all that students need to remember is that the last number was at the top of the tree, and that the middle number was at the end of the tree. And now you have to go through the factors of 2. So what are all the numbers that multiply to 2? Well, in this case, the only two numbers that multiply to 2 are 2 and 1, and they happen to also add to 3. Once you've found those two numbers, all you now have to do is write the final brackets with those two numbers inside those final brackets. So the two that you found here, and it really doesn't matter what order you put them in, but those numbers go into that bracket, or those two brackets, to give you your final factored form. Let's look at another example. Here we have x squared minus 2x minus 8. So at the top of my tree, I would put the negative 8. At the end of my tree, I would put the negative 2. And now I have to go through all of the factors of negative 8. Well, there's a couple of things that can multiply to negative 8. Let's just deal with the 8, and we'll deal with the negative at the end. So factors of 8 would be 1 and 8, 2 and 4. But you need two numbers that also add to negative 2. There's no way with 1 and 8 to get a negative 2. But there is with a 4 and 2, which are also factors of negative 8, but we need one of them to be negative so that they multiply to the correct value. In order to add to negative 2, that number has to be the negative 4. So I now have my two numbers that go into my brackets, x minus 4, x plus 2. And I'm done. So this kind of takes away the guess and check uh, the necessity to do guess and check, where if you set up your uh, tree, everything just basically tells you what the two numbers have to be, and then you can substitute them in. If we look at another example here, this time I have 56 that goes to the top of my tree, negative 15 that goes to the end of my tree, 
we need two factors of 56 that also multiply, or sorry, multiply 56 and add to negative 15. Well, the two factors that are going to work are 8 and 7, but because they have to add to negative 15, in this case, both of them have to be negative. But that still works with the positive 56 because a negative times a negative equals a positive. So now I know that my answer has to be x minus 8 times x minus 7. So I truly believe that setting up that little tree, and it doesn't have to be a tree, it can be any pattern you want. You could even technically do that in your head. But this really helps in the type 2 trinomial method that I'm going to show in my other videos. Thanks for watching. I hope that helps you out.